Hey there. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to another edition of In the Shoot. I'm Brandon Carpenter, and with me is my slightly uh, mentally decapitated son, Kalen. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, that was an interesting way to start this because, oh my goodness, the way we do this. Oh, whatever. All right. I'm glad we have fun when we do this. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Uh, so for this round of In the Shoot, round 15, because I've actually counted this time, uh, uh, I was thinking, what's some stuff that you like to do with downtime on the ranch? Because I know a lot of the times. <laughs> what yeah, is I know. Hold on. <laughs> Didn't we talk about this with vacation one time? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's so that? Here's, here's where, here's where, this is why I, I wanted to open the floor on it was, uh, there isn't downtime. There, you can always be doing something. And that's what I kind of was leading towards is um, you showed me and Braden growing up, like, hey, you know, if, if something like, for example, we, a couple summers ago, we switched out uh, water tanks and we just let one fill up with water. I mean, it's a giant uh, tractor tire that's been filled with water, but it takes a hot second before it starts filling up and you can check and make sure there's no leaks and stuff like that. So instead of sitting there watching it fill up and like, oh, this is cool. And you can just be talking back and forth. You're like, okay, this is downtime. What can we be doing now? So like, what are some things that you think of a lot of the times when you're going about getting a couple of things done that might be regular things that you think are like good opportunities to get the small stuff knocked out while you're also doing something else? Oh, got it. I, I mean, you just have to look around. There's all kinds of stuff to do all the time. Yeah. Um, organize stuff, put stuff back where you should be, um, you know, adjusting gates, maintenance on, on gates and the corral, uh, you know, stabbing the tanks. When's the last time you stabbed the tanks for the, for the fuel, for gas and diesel both? Oh, well, I better check that. In fact, we did that just, you know, last week. And Because the worst thing that could fuel. happen is you don't, and then suddenly you come over and you need fuel and you don't have fuel. You don't have fuel, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, there's always, it seems like there's always a pile of junk. You're yeah. always working with something and you're tossing stuff. And of course, and I've mentioned this before, I grew up with depression era grandparents and, uh, you know, parents that were, you know, during the end of the, uh, well, they were, they were born before the end of the world war two, but still the same thing. There was rationing. Um, they grew up this way. And so you don't throw anything away that you think you might need in the next 50 years. And so that, you know, that creates a problem because I just can't let go of stuff. Sometimes like, okay, what can we use this for? Right. Well, then you got a, a pile of stuff there. So there's always organizing that stuff and, um, you know, picking stuff up. I mean, things just happen that like you're in a hurry to do something or get something done. And it's like, okay, we're going to just stack this here and we'll come back to it and fix it. Well, those are times you can come back to it. Um, you know, there's always, it seems something to do like that, that uh, the, the shop seems to never get clean right. or never get fully organized. You'll drop something on the, on the bench. Say, okay, I'm gonna put that back. And it's not that it's, it's hard to do. It's just like, okay, I gotta take, you know, the 15 steps to the back corner there figure out where this has got to go organize it and it just doesn't get done so then every once in a while you just stop what you're doing and uh um uh, you know have to catch up so there's that you know there's always little repairs um hammer handles busted hammer handles you got a hammerhead laying there so like okay i've got some ham handles i'm gonna put them together i spent it i spent probably i don't know two three hours one day uh early in the spring while we were calving and uh replacing handles on like i think three shovels and <laughs> you know and a couple of hammers it's like okay you know you need them so might as well get it done um there's always always that kind of stuff going on so it's uh come alongs come along is a great tool but when you can't use it it's useless yeah and freezes they, up he just sits there yeah you gotta oil them up you gotta keep them lubed you gotta make sure the springs are working that the sides that hold the cable doesn't get crushed because that can happen and you crush it and crush the side of a cable then you know then you got a, a bigger problem is as if you had uh none at all yeah so well and I, th I think another thing uh because i was just thinking the 
the other part of that is is we use that with the horses too like that that's what also helps with you being able to get as many animals uh trained in such a short time uh is because you can have three of them getting used to a bit at the same time or yeah. hey one's starting and they can be getting used to having a saddle on them while you're riding the other so while you're doing something active on another either on the ranch taking care of the cows or something like that or another horse you can also still be training the horse and letting them work themselves is how you've always said it yeah let, yeah let them work themselves where um uh they're not used to a bit real well and you've got 30 minutes that you got to do something bit them up get it done and come back to them and yeah they're you know or saddling uh, those initial saddlings and stuff are important that it goes well but you're not overwhelming them and you're doing little things in in between and you yeah it's easy to burn up a day with uh three horses three head of horses that uh you've got two of them doing training on the on their own or training themselves and while you're working a third one and you just keep rotating those around it's you know way easy to do that and and uh you know another one that's that's uh something i'm trying to do right now and that is getting some of these heifers acclimated to an automatic waterer that is a pain in the butt yeah. and you go out there and you, they're curious and you get them feed them a little cake and they want to come up to you but if they haven't had any water you you got to fill that waterer let them nose into it and they'll they're thirsty and you got to show them where it's at but you want to keep them off of an open water source where you know they're going to go right to it they're not going to go to this waterer and so you're teaching them Sometimes you gotta, as they put their face down in it, then you're pushing the paddle down for them. Their face can feel it when they drop it, that there's a pressure resistance and then and then a uh, less resistance is that keys over on that cam and uh, opens the valve. And you'll get something figured out pretty quickly and others that are dumb as a post. And it's like, oh my God, why'd I keep you? And that takes, a, sometimes I spend a couple of hours out there just playing with that, you know, uh, this time of year in the fall after you've weaned uh, trying to get them to teach them how to drink out of a water I mean just it seems like it's like what a waste of time that I'm doing this but now you can take that animal and you can put them into a corral outside of an open water source and not worry about them yeah and yeah. that can happen I mean you may have to segregate them like that and it, and it takes place you know more often than not in the spring when we're calving and moving a lot of animals around through the corral for different purposes and they're not, they're not always in one herd. So getting those bulls to, to be able to drink out of a water like that's pretty important too. Well, look at that. Master horse trainer and journeyman cow trainer. All in one. Brandon Carpenter. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hey, kind of a renaissance man if you oh, want to. Uh... There you go. <laughs> All right. We'll put that out to pasture. <laughs> okay.